All right, this thing on. Check one, check two. We ready? Three, two, one. Blast off! So all right guys, coming to you on a Monday. We're starting early this week. So I know I haven't gotten a ton of videos up the last couple of weeks. I think you guys who had seen the video already know I've been dealing with my father who had an accident, broke his hip. So back and forth to Seattle the last couple of weeks. So I'm happy to have a moment to chill with you guys. I'm actually filming this video the night before, indulging in a loaded soda with a shot of Bailey's on top. And that is the loaded root beer. So I call this a dirty root beer right here. <whistles> so I thought it had been a while since we did a story time, aka a cautionary tale for you all. So don't go anywhere, guys. It is story time today on Indoor Smokers. <laughs> So, all right, guys, this is a story about something that happened to me a long, long time ago. So, I don't want to hear the judgments. We all do stupid shit when we're young. And like I said, this is a cautionary tale. So, you guys definitely don't want to do this. Do not try this at home or even over at a friend's house. So, this is about one time when I was up for five days straight. And yes... As many of you probably guessed it, there was some performance enhancing substances involved to do that feat. I'm just going to leave it to the imagination of what that might have been. So I've been bouncing around, doing a bunch of different shit. Anyways, I wound up over in Seattle, not exactly sure why. But I had been up five days, it was about 1 a.m. and I had to get back. And I'm not even sure now why, but at the time I'm sure I thought I had a really important reason why I had to get back. So I head out from Seattle about 1 in the morning. Literally, I don't know how many hours that is. 24 times 5, 120, something like that. So I'm already, you know, the whole drive across the pass. I don't even know how I'm keeping myself awake, playing music hella loud, got all the windows down, trying all of the tricks. And then I'm kind of going in and out of these weird kind of delirious states. And so I've never personally really hallucinated. I've done a lot of hallucinogenics, but kind of what you would think of, like actually seeing a thing that wasn't there, like a monster or something in the house. No, I've never had that. But I will say the closest I ever came was from sleep deprivation. But even so, even after five days, I'm still not saying I'm really like just seeing shit that ain't there. It's more like you're kind of going through just these pockets of strange disconnect with what's going on around you. So an example is I'm driving, we're coming across the pass, fucking pitch black, late, I think it was a Sunday night, so there's like no cars anywhere. And all of a sudden I go to answer something to my buddy and I'm like, oh yeah, like that one... And then I look over, man, there's nobody there. And then all of a sudden, it was like I was right in the middle of a conversation. But then I try to think, and I can't even think of who I thought I was talking to or what the fuck I thought we were talking about. But I knew I was like right in the middle of a fucking conversation a second ago. But that may have been a conversation two days earlier when my buddy was right. I don't fucking know. So like I said, you're kind of going in and out of these strange like pockets of unreality. If anybody's seen that episode of Red Dwarf, I think it was actually uh, Star Trek The Next Generation that had something similar to that. Just fucking don't think about it too much. You don't want to freak yourself out. Out. So I just kind of handle my shit, man. I managed to get all the way across the pass through town back up on Old Badger Mountain Road, which is like the last 20 miles I need to get up to the property I live on at that time. I'm still living off the grid, off a generator. But the closer I get, man, I just fucking cannot keep myself awake. It's kind of like when you got to go to the bathroom real bad and you're rushing home, but then all of a sudden if you can't like get the key in the thing and ah, it's just like you miss it by a few. There's an inversely proportional relationship with your proximity to your destination and how bad you have to go. Well, it's the same thing when you got to sleep real bad. So I managed to get most of the way up. I think I'm probably coming up on like the last 10 miles and this is about the last thing I remember. So Old Badger Mountain Road is a paved road that takes me out and then there's a two mile just dirt gravel road that doesn't get paved or anything out to finally get to my property. So about the last 10 miles up on the paved part of Badger Mountain Road so the speed limit is still like 50 and I'm so fucking dead. I'm driving but I'm falling asleep, I'm blacking out, I'm passing out, but my eyes must still be open because all I know 
is that I'm blackout, dead fucking asleep, and all of a sudden, right when we come into the turn on the fucking road, it's like my body sees it and wakes me up, and I wake up just to, all of a sudden, ah! <laughs> and then fucking get through the turn, and it's like, oh my God, oh my God. But then within like a few seconds, I just start fucking, I can't stay awake. Even after that, I'm still like, oh. And then the next thing I know, oh, oh, whew, oh my God, oh my God, oh, oh. I swear for about the last 10 miles of the ride and then even onto the dirt road, that's the way I hit every turn coming home. I don't even remember making any of the rest of the drive. I just remember being waking up to a nightmare of fucking <laughs> midway into a turn of a fucking like off-road disaster if you didn't hit it. Just got onto my driveway, fucking parked the car, rolled out, crawled up, got into my fifth wheel and just fucking crashed. Next thing I know, I wake up. That was probably about 4 or 5 in the morning. I wake up, it's like maybe 8.30 at night. But I didn't thought it was still morning. I wake up all disoriented, thinking I've been asleep for like 3 or 4 hours. Like, fuck, man. I'm surprised I feel so awake after all that. But then anyways, I kind of got my bearings after a while. Realized it was 8.30 at night. I would slept for like maybe 15 hours straight. But I did survive it amazingly. But man, when they tell you don't drive tired, they ain't kidding. And then I remember mentioning to a couple of people about the crazy thing and staying up so much. And people were like, dude, I've heard if you stay up more than eight hours straight that you can never make up that sleep again. I never thought that made any sense. I'm like, well, what the fuck's that mean? I'm just gonna be tired for the rest of my life now? <laughs> but anyways, eventually I did wake up and I'm pretty fucking energetic as it comes these days. So I think I recovered. But definitely not something I would recommend for anybody to try. But I'm just telling you guys it's something that did happen in my life. And thank God I didn't kill myself or anybody or any property out there on the roadway. And yes, if you've heard my other stories about trying to go across the pass in the middle of the winter and that whole disaster, then I would say yes. You're right, there was probably about a two or three year period there when the passes were much more dangerous because I was on them. And hey, here's to the start of a great week. There you go, clicked you right in the face. All right guys, if you have not already, please do subscribe to this channel. Ring that little bell if you wanna get notification when the videos go up. If you enjoyed yourself anytime during this video, you like these story times, make sure you give us a thumbs up and let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Let me know so long as you ever stayed up and what's the worst conditions you ever drove under. And I am talking about mental conditions, not the weather. Although that's fun too. I'd be curious to hear that as well.